Ain't no telling what I'm feeling. Hey, I'm beyond all that. F- hey, little mama, would you like to be my sunshine? We touch my game, we gon' turn this shit to. Ice on my neck, cost me 10 times 3. 30. Th- so. I think that one of the most important things that we can do in our life is build confidence. And some people have this misconception with confidence where they think it's synonymous with self-absorption and that's not, that's not it. Some of us came out of childhood feeling superior to others based on how we were raised or some of us came out feeling inferior to others. True confidence is sort of in between these two worlds. True confidence ultimately is being yourself. And that's such a basic encouragement that we've heard our entire lives, like to be yourself. But what does that really actually mean for us? We all have a persona that we've created, which I'll refer to as our public self, and that's totally normal. And then we also have our core self, which we've had since we were born. And actually, it was who we were in childhood. It was before we understood our relation to the world and before we had to... um, become socially acceptable to other people. So in childhood, you're who you are and you don't really hold back much. What happens to us as we get older is people start telling us that who we are is not welcome. Or people start shaming us for things that we do. Or we don't feel accepted all of a sudden. We start becoming socially aware And we slowly start to form our public self in order to survive and to be accepted into whatever world we live in. And some of the reactions that we got to our core self growing up were really painful, which makes it even harder to get back to that place because we have these triggers and anxiety around uh, allowing ourselves that freedom. The freedom does tend to come back to us in our old age, though. I think we all have seen elderly people just say exactly what they want or exactly what they mean or tell people exactly what they're thinking. And we always think it's kind of funny, but ultimately they're just going back to that time in life where they had freedom to be themselves. And for us in the middle stage of life, we seem to have a really hard time with being ourselves. We're trying to socialize and adapt to the world around us, and all of us seem to feel this disconnect with our public self and our core self. We all know that feeling. It's interesting, though, because we all know authenticity when we see it, and we usually applaud it. Some of us do. Some people shame it, but... Those people lack more confidence than anyone else. Shaming is the absolute opposite of confidence. Because true confidence has no need to put others down. And it isn't competitive because true confidence means we have realized that we are unique. No one else is like us. No one else has the has been through the exact experiences that we've been through. No one else can do what we do. And if we don't show up as our true selves in life, we are doing a dis- disservice to ourselves and to the world around us. If true, authentic confidence was taught to all children, we would have less bullying, less shaming, less competition, and more collaboration. This is something that I personally had to learn, and like I mentioned before, some of us come out of childhood feeling superior to other people, and some of us feel inferior to everyone around us. I was probably more toward the superior end of things, which is hard for me to admit, because that doesn't sound good. I 
I've always been a little bit more competitive and a little jealous of other people's success. But lately this has changed for me. And I'm finally understanding what it means to be confident. And there's this idea in business um, called the Red Ocean Strategy and the Blue Ocean Strategy. The Red Ocean Strategy refers to businesses that are trying to compete with one another in the exact same ways. So they are starting a business that's already been started and they are doing the exact same thing as everyone else. And the only way they can compete is by lowering their prices, offering more, um, you know, doing deals, like just trying to compete in the same way as everyone else. So the Red Ocean refers to bloody waters where people are just kind of fighting it out. The blue ocean strategy is when a business does something that only they could do, something that's unique, something that isn't a part of the competition. And a blue ocean is like that wide open water where you're just sitting on a flotation device by yourself, you're drinking a nice glass of lemonade, and you're just at peace. And I've tried a few blue ocean strategies in my business. like combining floral design with herbalism. So when somebody has a wedding, I'll put medicinal plants in their arrangements and then after the wedding I will make their arrangements into medicine. And that's a whole other ball game that's not in competition with other florists because it's just different and it's unique. And I started thinking, what if we lived our lives like this? What if we applied the blue ocean strategy to our lives? It isn't about competition, it's about being yourself because that in itself is unique as is. You're the only person that can be that. And being yourself is what you ultimately want and it's what we all desire. So some other aspects for building confidence are mental focus, self-talk, and physiology. We all have things that we focus our thoughts on, but a lot of us don't take time to think about what we think about. And like, are your thoughts more geared toward positive things that are happening in your life, goals that you have, things that you're excited about, or are your thoughts more toward what's going wrong in your life and how you aren't going to succeed at things? we really need to start looking at how our thoughts affect how we feel about ourselves. The second thing is self-talk, which is similar to mental focus, but self-talk is more of the mantras that we say to ourselves. And for me, I find it really helpful to write down inspiring quotes or mantras that make me feel really good about myself or make me feel inspired. And so I painted my entire wardrobe with chalkboard paint and whenever something comes up that really inspires me or makes me feel really good about what I'm doing or something that makes me feel good about myself, I write it down on my chalkboard and so whenever I'm getting ready in the morning or doing anything on the doors of my wardrobe are all of these amazing quotes and ideas and thoughts and they're things that I say to myself throughout the day. I also like to have other visual reminders so I tied this string around my wrist and that's to remind me to, to be myself day to day and to encourage other people. And just all the ideas that I try to focus on during the day, I, I put my intentions into this visual so that I can see it and remember. So the last piece of of that is physiology, how you hold your body, how you hold your head, how you breathe, all those things you do with your body can affect your mind and how you feel about yourself. And so if we go into a social situation and we feel anxiety and we, and we tense up and we start breathing shallow, we are not going to feel confident. We're not going to feel good about ourselves. You can immediately loosen up your shoulders and change how you're standing to find a, find a position that makes you feel most confident and start practicing just being in that position. And also practice taking note of how you're breathing and if you are breathing, sometimes we don't realize we're holding our breath for a long time because of anxiety. And just loosening up 
and changing our physiology can change how we feel about ourselves. So definitely try those three things. Think about what you think about, um, take note of your self-talk and maybe put some visuals around to help you remember how you want to feel about yourself and how you want to go about your day and what inspires you and change your actual physical body. Self-confidence is freedom and we should be passing it on. So the last thing that I feel like helps a lot with self-confidence is helping others build confidence which in turn builds our confidence because people like people who are encouraging and uplifting and confident enough to give people real thought out compliments. So the last thing I want to leave you with is lift other people up. That's going to make you feel really good about yourself and then it's going to make them feel good about themselves. And so everybody wins. So those are my thoughts on confidence and I hope that these give you some ideas of how to um, build your own self-confidence and be yourself ultimately. Hey little mama, would you like to be my sunshine? We touch my game, we gon' turn this to ice on my neck, cost me ten times three.